thank you for coming. Uh, we're talking about the 10-year road management plan that, that uh, the board has drafted. Uh, and I'll go into some more detail about it in just a minute, but I thought I'd introduce to you some of the players, some of us are here tonight. So the select board is here. And I would like to have the board introduce themselves. Jody LaVoy Carnes. Mike Rolo. And I'm Suzanne Hewitt. I'm currently the chair. And our road agent, Jeff Sangin, is also here tonight. He's sitting out there tonight, available mm -hmm. to answer some of our questions. So I think um, it's such a small number that we can be really uh, informal. But if, you know, it's still up to me to try to maintain control in the group. So I would appreciate it if you ask to be recognized before you speak. And I do have a little presentation, it's very short. Um, so what, what we've done is, is we've worked with the uh, Scrapper Regional Planning Commission on a pilot program called the Road Surface Management System that was developed at the University of New Hampshire uh, by the Technology Transfer Center. And uh, Jeff and I have spent some time working with the uh, Scrapper Regional Planning Commission staff, their transportation specialists, to come up with this this 10-year uh, road plan. It, its key components include a data set of, of our, all of our roads. So this is data that the state has been compiling. The state has a lot of really interesting you know, GIS uh, and related data that they use for roads and other kinds of physical assets in the state. So uh, because of our relationship with Stratford Regional, we're you know, contributing members, you know, we were able to grab that data set from them. And uh, some of the other pieces of this were a, uh, a, day, a fields that allowed us to set priorities for roads and the current condition of the roads. So priorities went to, went to roads that were, uh, as you can imagine, heavily trafficked. Those are the ones that, that became, um, had a high priority in general. And then the current status of the road, uh, was the result of Jeff and the Scrapper Regional Planning uh, Transportation guy going physically going out and inspecting every segment of road in the town, and so we used that priority listing coupled with the current state to help us figure out how we would start the ten-year plan. Um, the the <coughs> other key. One of the other key features of this, which is really cool for those of us who have seen this, is that you could take a segment of road, or let, let's say all of, of, uh, of the boundary, and say, I want a, a full depth reclamation on the whole road. That's what we need to do. And you would just choose that application, and it would say, okay, that's going to cost you blah, blah, blah. And the, those cost figures, the tech transfer center compiled from working with state contractors, road contractors, over the last year or so. Um, so that's, that's where we're able to, to get those figures that you see in the 10-year plan across all of those 10 years. And this was all at no cost to the town other than the staff resources that were invested in working on this thing. So we feel pretty, um, uh, you know, pretty good about being able to have this opportunity to use this. So, so we used, so we started building the plan by looking at a combination of the priority and the current condition. And we were also looking to package annual work that fell into the $250,000 to $300,000 range. Uh, we also would sometimes look at proximity. So we'll see that we put all the village roads together in one of the years. Um, and also when we were building the plan, as we were trying to get our cost goals for each year, we had to notice, we had to note associated costs because one of the deficiencies of the plan is that it just costs out the actual road piece. So if you have like two culverts underneath that you need to replace, that's not in there. So you have to think about that yourself. If you've got ditching along the side or anything else that is unusual about it, uh, Heritage gave us some interesting uh, we had to finagle heritage because we're thinking of cutting out whole sections of it because it's not, uh, it needs to be regraded. Am I saying that correctly, Jeff? Box cut. Box cut, there we go, for any engineer in, the, in here. So we did that. And what, I think what we like about it is just having a plan. It's not perfect. I'm sure you're going to tell us ways in which it's not perfect, but 
you know, we have a 10-year window. At the end of the 10-year window, our roads are going to be better than they are at the start of this 10-year window. And when we start again, it shouldn't cost us as much the next go-around because we'll be starting at a better spot. To, and we're not going to wait 10 years. We're going to keep, go, you know, increasing our window. But conceptually, you know, we'll be better off with each year that we, you know, chip away at this thing. Uh, so, what are some of the things that we're kind of unsure about? Is the costing component within the software realistic? You know, the, the things that we use to try to get to our $250,000, $300,000 targets. We're not sure. You know, uh, experience will tell us that. Is our $250,000, $300,000 annual goal realistic? Town meeting will tell us that. Will some roads turn to gravel before we get to them? We've heard that that's so from some folks. So, um, so anyway, that's that's um, a little bit of background. Or do you want to add anything to, to this? All right. So other than the roads turning to gravel before we get to them, I mean that's. Uh, I think that's why we may need to reprioritize the list. Um, this is the list, the starting point, and we're here to hear from you all on your opinions and take an obviously professional opinion of the road agent and the folks at uh, Striker Regional and the Tech 2 uh, uh, Tech Squared uh, East Square uh, and UNH uh, they're, uh, they're learning opinion as well but uh, happy to hear and excited to hear from all of you here. So I don't know if you can see this um, <clears throat> So what I'm showing you here, here is the summary. It's not the detail, but this is how the plan works out year to year and the roads that we're going to do or planning to do right now. And if you go back and look at the detail, this is what was online. So if you go back and look at uh, next year, the detail says what we're planning. So Founder State has a full depth reclamation of a part of the road. The road that heads toward um, Portland Avenue is in decent shape. And so we're just doing an overlay there. So so if you want to see the, the, what it is that we're sort of planning on each particular for each particular road, that's what's in the detail. So that's the overall picture. I'm going to go back to the just to this summary here and then open it up for questions, comments, and the like. Other questions? Yes. Um, can you just explain some of the details of what it means, what the binder means, what the whole, I mean, just so I, I, yes. I understand. Good question. Yeah, hey, you, I, you, I, I need to take notes as our Sure. Is sure. it your name, sir? Joe Desch, D-E-S-C-H. What road are you on? Uh, River Road. Thank you. So are you interested in like Woods Run? Is that? Not necessarily. I'm just curious of what, for example, the, um, I thought I could get it on that. But, okay, so three structures, I understand. Uh, I guess just the terminology. So, okay, so, like, what does binder mean? Yeah. yeah. Because you talked about, I think, in some of the roads, doing a second, you know, doing one thing to it, and then a couple years later doing something else to it. I didn't know what that meant. Well, so, for example, in Bear Road, we couldn't afford, we wanted, we felt we needed to do a full depth reclamation of the whole road. So that means, like, tearing it up, regrading, kind of starting from scratch. We couldn't afford to do that to the entire road. It's, our, I believe, our longest road. And so what we did the first year is we did, I don't know, maybe, maybe two-thirds, I'm not sure, and put what Jeff refers to as a binder coat on it. And I'll let him explain what that is in a minute. And then the next year, which was just this past summer, we finished the reclamation and then on the remainder piece and then put the top coat on the whole thing. Okay. So Jeff, you want to explain what the binder does and, and some of the things we have to be careful about if we use it? So binder is more like a base. So when you do a full reclamation, <clears throat> you pretty much grind up the asphalt that's there, regrade the road, and when you, read, when you grade that asphalt up, it gives a good base. Once the road's graded, you put a binder down, which is made out of three-quarter inch stone, which is a more rugged stone as, as a, a base layer for your top. So we put two inches of binder down, compacted, and then binder where it's coarse, you know, it, it just, it, it'll hold together, but it's just, rain can get through it, 
you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, then you overlay the road, what they call an overlay, when you put a, a tack in between it, which is like a glue for the roads, and then you overlay it with a half inch top, which is a more uh, finer material, has a lot more fines in it, and it's... So that lasts for, that's kind of a year That, that road should be a 15 yeah. year... After you put the final... Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. But the binder, I don't know if you mentioned this, Jeff, you can't leave just the binder coat for a length of time. Right. No, you can't. So I think you said maybe no, no more than A lot one. of towns will do like a year and let traffic run on it, and then they'll overlay it the next year. So a solution and to, let's say, some of the roads being concerned moving returning to gravel would be, well, you don't have the money, you can do a binder to it and plan for it plan for the final one later on, I guess, so that's just the... When you're, when you're doing a rebuild on a road, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. I mean, there are things that we could do. I mean, what, we're, we're, as you know, just starting out. And so we've got, you know, what we're planning for, for 2017, which may still change because um, we're planning on doing Foundry Street right now, and also uh, Pinch Hill, not the entire thing, because I think we done a part of it. And Pinch Hill, when it intersects with Sligo, it's a Y intersection. And the state is, which is not to say this intersection. So the state is advised uh, transforming your Y intersections to T intersections. And they also are in the process of making some money available to do that. But we're unclear when it's going to be available. Is it a certainty that it will be available. So the board and Jeff, and we're not in agreement yet, are, are thinking, are wondering, should we possibly wait if we think we can get some money? In which case, um, you know, it would change 2017. If I could bring up the summary in a minute here. Um, so, you know, we've got Pinch Hill scheduled for next year. So. One, one way to manage this, I've got a, another version. It, it drops down, and Wood, Woods Run comes up, and so Woods Run and Heritage come up a little bit, pieces of it. The other thing that does happen when you do that is that it smooths this just a little bit. This becomes less than not quite you know, 300, and this becomes not quite 275, and this gets a little bit higher. So it, it, effect, it effectively smooths out those, those first three years. So that could be something to consider, but Jeff, you know, Jeff is saying, yeah, but that intersection will be gravel. So, so there are things to consider. So, this is a list of the plan for the next California Silver Street. And the first half of the plan looks like the first five years, I don't see Silver Street on there at all. Yeah, uh, and, all right, so. And so, is it going to be, is it in your 10 year plan? And then, secondly, if think about the problems that exist down at the end of that street. During the winter time, that's where the snow, the snow plow takes all the snow and basically puts it in my, puts it the state almost snow in my yard. Mm -hmm. And um, plus, uh, you've got two uh, cisterns, I guess two uh, drains on either side of the road that are, com are completely blocked up during the winter time. And the road there is completely gravel. It's it's torn up. It's terrible. And on a rainy day in the in, a, in the middle of the winter, it turns into an ice skate. Um, it, it's it hasn't been it, when they did Silver Street, that was ignored. Yeah. Well, so that, that whole extension there, which is really it's not an extension. It's the original Silver Street before it was blocked off 40 years ago. So so. Part, the, the plan covers only the roads that the town of Rawlingsford maintains, which is not all of our roads. The state maintains some of our major arteries, like uh, Main Street, and they just recently uh, resurfaced that. Roberts Road, which they resurfaced last street, uh, last year. Rollins Road, which they recently resurfaced part of. So am I at the wrong so, Well, no, no, because we, no, because you're you're at an end. So Silver Street, I know it's state maintained. Jeff, do you know the actual spot and where where we take over or where the state, <coughs> what the state is supposed to manage? Where, so we maintain where that shop corner is, and you can go straight on to, I call it Silver Street Extension, 
kind of a cul-de-sac. Yes, the cul-de-sac yeah, the cul -de -sac. Yeah. from that stop sign in is where we maintain. Do, do you know so, where Mr. Fournier lives? Do you know if he's on a, a state maintained farm? Um, where do you live? Uh, uh, six six eight. It's the last uh, last home on the on the left. On the left, on on Silver. On Silver Street. Yeah, I'm going to say you're on a state road. And then they would also manage the catch basins, or are those? They would. Um, I can actually give you some contact information to if you to uh, get a hold of the state to uh, if you have issues. Well, could we could we call them? Oh, we could call them. Yes. Yeah, it might be helpful for us to call him on his behalf because it would mean more. I think coming from a, a town official. I can call him first thing tomorrow morning. Yeah, so maybe maybe. You know where I? You know where I am? I do know where you are. Okay. So we you know how the, the plows, they push all that snow right to the end, and really they leave me stranded, usually. So I gotta, I gotta clean up on the state road part as well as my property. But that's not the problem. The problem is, is that the road hasn't been finished probably for four years. Would it help if, if you actually went had an appointment and spoke with Mr. Forney at some point at his place, or do you feel that you have enough of an idea about? I can, I'll can, I can meet up with him. Okay, so maybe the two of you can figure yeah. out when that might. The road's being torn apart with prosecutors and things like yeah. that. It's, yeah. it, it's just, it's a good idea. The state has a website with its list of roads and the condition that they're in, and this is two years ago. I went to look virtually all of the state maintained roads in, in Rollinsford were this is. So Silver Street is a state road. It is. Yeah. And they, I don't know whether they're going to continue to march through the town. I mean, it, it's been comforting that they've done Roberts and this year Main Street and uh, parts of Rollins. Well, they did Silver a couple years ago. They did? They did a really nice job, but they left that piece undone. They, they, they started on short and went and made the, uh, the left-hand turn. Well, maybe, Jeff, if you inspect it, maybe there's something that, you know, maybe they're not aware, maybe they plan to come back. I don't really know. But I'll get a hold of them tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions? Herb. Herb, you wait. Um, how, does, how does this uh, relate to historic town budgeting for road repair? In other words, are we piggybacking another 300 grand a year on top of the existing maintenance budget? Mm -hmm. So what we did uh, this year... So like what is the typical maintenance budget over the past decade or so? 22,000. <laughs> okay, you answered the question. And then there was a, a Warner of a town meeting on top of that. So, so we... So, so the... the yeah, so um, the maintenance budget would have been you know, 22, dollars $25,000 a year for quote unquote maintenance and then for repaving which was really maintenance um, there was a there'd be an additional Warren article, a standalone Warren article. And it's been anywhere from hundred to hundred and fifty to now. So we would react to a road that was really broken and then both every year we would react to broken roads and every year figure out which one's got priority in our muscle over that. At one time at one time there was a ten year highway. Back and in then, the eighties. That was quite a and long then time. It ago. stopped and then um, so I did spend a little time looking in past minutes, and there was questions. Well, what will the money be used for, and this, that, and everything. It was never really as firm in most cases. Well, we think this, we think that. So, you know, we like we like to plan. It, it's helpful for us. We think it's helpful for the town to know what we have in mind, and to get back to the financing part. So we have gradually been doing two things: one, upping the actual maintenance. The, in the operating budget, and then putting in a road for an article. So, so the town could still say no to the road for an article. Mm -hmm. And so this past year, we had, I think, 55000 in the operating budget for roads mm -hmm. and a $200,000 road for an article. So it's 255000 So, you know, we're sort of kind of in the ballpark. I mean, this is going to be more. But even with our initial, uh, and it's still, we're still very much in the planning process, but even with, you know, with a $300,000, because we're thinking of putting $75,000 now in the operating budget, and then another uh, $225,000 road warrant article to get to the three hundred, dollars that 
with all the things that we are currently in the budget that we're looking at, we're still looking at a tax rate, possible tax rate increase of like, you know, 15 cents. So, so the plan is that every year this you use that combination of strategy. Yes. Budget. Yes. You know, this isn't a budget meeting. Right. It's not a budget, but that's it. It's all. Yeah. So. Okay. That's that's what we're planning on doing. So the town. Yeah, so there are two opportunities for the, for the town to say, well, we just don't want to spend that amount of money. One is, you know, you can reduce the operating budget, you know, with a voice <coughs> uh, motion at the town meeting, or you can vote down the warrant article. Okay. Any other questions? Gary, I know you have pictures for us. Well, I, I would like to. Yes. I live on Kelwin Drive, and I'm writing some pictures. I know everybody's road needs work, and you do have a nice way. I think you're laying it out the right way, okay? I just want you to see. Are, are you I've driven a lot of the roads in this town, and there are some that are in not so good shape, but I don't think this is it. I think this is the bottom 10%, okay? Are yeah. you going to be in grapple by the time we get to you? Is well, that I'm on the end of the road there, and as I had to have the town come and get <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Two or three dozen. They had to come and pick up two or three dozen pieces of pavement at the end of our street. Yeah, it looks like a truck. A a truck went in there um, during the uh, spring thaw, and there's wheel ruts that are yay deep. I don't know if it was. I mean, you know, Summersworth actually maintains that, and in return, yeah. well, we maintain. Plow, the snow plow beats it up. Yeah. But uh, that's from the snow plow. You know, it's just starting to deteriorate. Yep. And overlay is uh, well. My biggest complaint is we're not scheduled until 2024. Eight winters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there won't be much road left there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eight winters. And, you know, I see it. I mean, I'll, pretty much there's no traffic there except for my cars and so mm -hmm. on. Anybody who turns around. So you know, but this is. Just for well, he's correct. It's 2024. Yeah, I just want to see what's around. So it's, it's a 35,000, right now it's a $35,000 price tag, but I think, you know, I, Jeff, I think that's just an overlay. That is not an overlay. Wow. That's let's, that's look, that's let's look at the detail. Yeah, it does say. Yeah. That one spot would have to be cut out, binded in, and then you could overlay it. All right. So overlay may work on part of it, but then we'll have to do like There's, there's a small that. section that, that yeah. needs well, to be cut out. You know, one of the things, um, you know, clearly the we're looking at this every year. It's a 10 year plan, right. we'll be looking right. at it every year. Yeah. So the what's the, uh, you know, the, sort of like the worst case scenario would be that things are more expensive than what this program is, uh, telling us, and we're going to have to really juggle things around for all of us, it could be that, you know, we have some, uh, I don't want to say savings, but some of the, especially the associated costs that we may have over uh, estimated because we're just really not sure, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they'll come in a little bit, a little bit less. And so, we, you know, there may be the opportunity, to spe especially for short road, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to fit it in somewhere. It's been, it's been, it's been quite a my youngest is 29, and I think he was about three or four. But you know, it's like it's like the rest of the town. It gradually deteriorates, and uh, there's not a lot of traffic. It's a neighborhood. To this point, could the model maybe is it maybe that the model factors in total people affected or traffic flow? Traffic flow, yes. So there's an important priority that's based on traffic flow and number, you know, that sort of thing. So like when you lose power, if you're unlucky enough to be at, a, at the end of the line, maybe it's yeah. less, oh, yeah. Yeah. less forgiving <laughs> or less, you know. <laughs> it figures it seems to be less and less, right. you know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. And so it, it, that, that explains why it ends up where it ends up. But you know we're looking for data like this. And, you know this is why we had this so we can figure out where where might we need to. If we well, I hate to jump ahead of every, anybody else because everybody needs their own. At least your schedule. 
<laughs> yeah. You're scared that. I'm scared for you. Yeah. Right. I think you can hear on this. What time they get me? I don't know what's going to be left. Yeah. So, so Gary, that's, you know, we'll be looking at this every year. Okay. No, I just thought I'd bring it up because I, I really don't know if I think it's going to last so bad. The rest of the park isn't that great either. And uh, it's the plow that really does it. Between that and the guy in the next street who has two trailers and a truck and his yard and says he's not operating the business, mm -hmm. you know, this is detracting from my value. It really is. So, you know, I understand. How much abatement can I put in for to offset the loss? Mm -hmm. Anyway, but we, we would you like to take these with you? Ooh, you know, I can I don't know if you want them or I can hang on to them. Jeff? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll look at them. So, you, you can contemplate, you can meditate on I, them. I've been out there <laughs> several times. I know what, I know what he's yeah, talking he's, about. He's been there. I do, yeah, that's that's one of them. Not, not this. I'm complex to the uh, But, uh, you know, this is... Be too close to taking, but, um... You know, at the end of the street, there's... You'll have to be safe from the gravel. So these people that provided this model or this program, they're obviously uh, engineering uh, types. And so in Vermont, there's some towns that are actually considering uh, letting some of their asphalt roads turn to ground. Absolutely. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, now I'm not advocating that, and I know this is a different part of the world, and the track, you know, there's a lot more folks driving on the roads around here. But, you know, those are the types of things we're going to need to talk about when you go to budget with Warren article and you get the angry mob saying, oh, we can't. You know, it looks like we've under-maintained roads for many, many years, and now we're just trying to dig out of a big hole that we, we found ourselves but we are having a serious discussion of that in other parts of the world for this very same reason. Yeah. So, so it is, it, the, the Tech Transfer Center at UNH is, is housed within the Civil Engineering Department. So they are civil engineers. The pricing came from road contractors in the state. That, that's, that's, that much I can share with you. Uh, our experience is new to this. We don't, we don't know uh, how accurate it is. I know that when we had conversations with uh, the Stratford Regional Planning uh, Consultant and Jeff, you know, Farmington, how, what's the percentage of roads in Farmington that are gravel? There's, a quite, there's actually quite a percentage, but the studies are showing that it costs more to maintain the gravel roads, so they're actually starting to pave all their roads now. Really? Yeah, it costs more money to maintain a gravel road than it does an asphalt road. Over 20 years, 30 years? I'm not sure of the studies of it, but you know, you either haul it in gravel, you need to grade it, all your materials in your ditch line, every no. time it rains out, you're upgrading it. No. So I'm sure there's so, between... So it isn't a profound cost savings, is that? No, no. No kidding. Like I said, they, they did studies in Farmington, and uh, they're actually starting to pave a lot of their dirt roads. No kidding. So, that's... Trying to think out of the block. Yeah, it was a good thought. I was surprised to hear that, because you just think, well, okay. Must be cheaper. You're not having an asphalt. You don't know, maintain it. It's cheaper. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, just a question on the algorithm that helps with the prioritization. So, I mean, I live in the area of Finchel Road, and I was really, when I looked at it, I was really kind of surprised it was at the top, in that a good portion of it looked like it had just been redone anyway. And there's a small section that runs from the finished piece to Sligo. That's the but piece. That's, right, that's the piece. Because that road never strikes me as getting a lot of traffic on it. So I was curious what, especially to this man's problem, you know, it just struck me that he probably has more traffic on his road and he's so far down versus what happens in Pinch Hill versus just like when I'm either cutting through Sligo or going for a walk along. It. So, I'm, so I guess the algorithm, what else is in the, what's in there that's probably forcing it to come so much to the top? There's also judgment. So mm -hmm. it's not just the algorithm. We're looking at various characteristics to try to package things together. Yeah. And Jeff has trouble with plowing that piece. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's problematic for the plow. We've broken some plows there. Okay. And so that's what 
that's so that comes mean. into the yes. outside of whatever the, yes. the algorithm there yes. is. We have a we have the town issue of how to deal with it. Okay. But nonetheless, you know, there is conversation. Uh, not we're not all agreed. There is conversation about whether or not it's going to be uh, beneficial for us to wait for the state to pick up the tab and making it a T intersection instead right. of a Y. Right. You and what does that mean? You know, how many plows of you know how many plow lake lakes? What might we wait? Mm -hmm. And you know maybe we wait two or three years, and the state says, "Oh, we're not doing this anyway." So, so we're we're looking at that. But if the the other model that I put together, it, it would move that to like 2019, I think. And what what it does is it brings the heritage, the pieces of heritage and Woods Run mm -hmm. up a bit and drops in chill. Thanks. But we're not, you know, we're not fully. We don't have to fully sort it out. Celia. Uh, Celia Leopold, Washington Street, which is slated, according to your road plan, with um, Franklin, uh, 2016, or 2026, 2026. Well, you're really at the bottom of the barrel, aren't you? Yes, Oops. second to last one. Yes. And between uh, Franklin Street and Washington Street will be roughly $15,000, according to what you have there. And I think we're the only ones in that area that wouldn't be done by then because I don't know when Jesse Doe is up to be done. Um, I didn't look at that. Jesse Doe is somewhere up here. It's right here, 2019. Okay, so you've already done Church Street and we had to watch Church Street being done. Um, what is it? Wentworth Road is getting a brand new road because there's a new development going in. Pleasant Street has been repaved and gotten a brand new road because they had a new house going. Um, and I guess I need to call Jeff if I have big chunks of stuff in front of my house and across the street in front of my neighbor's house to have him come pick it up. Sure. Um, and so. I'm concerned that that's a long wait, and it's only fifteen thousand dollars. So if some money opens up in the meantime, maybe some of those streets move up because, like the gentleman before me said, looking at Pinch Hill, they're being they've got another two thousand dollar overlay or something in twenty twenty four before we're even touched. Well. That's a good point. So you will know, you will start to see that um, one of the things that the and we don't own it, so I, I couldn't really show it to you. Uh, but one of the things it does is uh, you could look at a road or a, the segments of a road as one record across years, and it will tell you what it, it assigns it um, its sort of condition a, a value that uh, equates with its condition. And so, you know, we're trying to to arrive at keeping, you know, if 100 is the very best and zero is gravel, shall we say, we're looking at somewhere in the 70, you know, as a target for all of our roads to have them in the 70, 75, uh, uh, hit that kind of a value of uh, condition target. So, so when we do bare road, which is now done, and we look at it across the, I'll do it this way, across the record in, in the years, it starts, it starts to degrade a little bit, right? Just, just this is the algorithm. We don't know if the road will, but you can understand that it's made well. So the algorithm degrades the condition of it. And so then you look for the point at which it seems to be degrading to below 70. And so at that point, Jeff will say, okay, let's do a, a, a uh, you do crack sealing. Crack sealing, thank you. Crack sealing, and so then that brings the condition of that road back up. So that's why you're seeing. So what we're wanting to do is, once we attack a road and bring it to a really good condition, we don't want to let it deteriorate. So, so we're trying exactly. We're trying to stay ahead of it. So we're doing crack sealing plan and those sorts of things. But your point is well taken. And some of the things that would allow, especially for these small roads, that look to be small amounts, and again, assuming that it works well, so you know you could, you could start painting rosy pictures. What, you know, either the costing is on the high side, 
of the model, and so we're finding that things are not quite as expensive. Or, or the town finds itself with increased revenue, and we're, we're, we are enjoying increased revenue in a, in a, in a few areas, uh, not anything to, you know, we're not to write home about, uh, an increased tax base. I mean, we're getting new housing. Again, not, not by leaps, leaps and bounds, but we're getting new housing. And so to the extent that both of those um, terms in your tax rate equation allow us to increase our expenses without you know, increasing the tax rate, then you know, we might be able to slide in a, a Kelwin or a Washington. My other concern is just past my house, the road bubbles. And I wonder how Jeff deals with that. There's a bump in the road. Um, at the corner of my property that goes across the street, it's a drainage ditch. Um, that was uh, that was taken care of recently. It's okay. all taken care of. Because it used to be a speed bump between my house and the neighbor's property. And um, my husband and I often walk down Franklin because we're on two dead end roads. And Franklin has a hole in it that maybe, I don't know if Jeff knows about or he needs to come look at or whatever. Um, I know you guys just did patching, so whenever you guys look for patching again, would you check out our neighborhood, see where it rates among the list? Um, and when I think of Pinch Hill, I think there's only one or two houses on there. And when you think of Washington, Franklin, you're talking 15 houses that all access that road. And of those 15 houses, three, four of them are, are apartment buildings. So you're talking eight residents, usually, in a building. So it seems to service a lot more people than the housing would make up for. And I know traffic studies have been done on some of the other housing developments in town. The other thing I wanted to bring up was sidewalks. It looks like in 20, uh, 24 or earlier, you're going to do sidewalks when you do the downtown village. Yeah, you, you have to look at the detail for that because there's the si sidewalks are not costed out in this model. So when we uh, looked at doing uh, the village, so it's 2020, right? Okay. So 2nd Street, 3rd Street, 4th Street, Cross Street, South Street, sidewalks. So we have no clue how much it's going to cost us to do sidewalks. We have some challenges with sidewalks in the village because the width of sidewalks nowadays is supposed to be whatever it is. 60 inches, zero obstruction. 60 inches, and it, we, we may not have that. So we're going to have to think about what we can do. But they're a challenge to us right now because the bobcat that Jeff uses to do the sidewalks is to, can't do some of the village sidewalks. Is that correct? Yeah, the, this, the bob, so we have a bobcat we, we snow blow with. And when we purchased the machine, we bought inverted rims so we could start snow blowing all our sidewalks, well, the ones I can fit on. So the sidewalk needs to be a minimum of 60 inches for me to be able to fit on a sidewalk to maintain it in the winter time. But one of the things we're hoping, again, when you have a plan and you sort of know it's in the horizon, so we can start to look to see if there's any way the state or any kind of federal grants or state grants or whatever can help us with uh, in the village for sidewalks. I know that there are sidewalks on Church Street that end abruptly, and I don't know if it's because of a property issue, it's not the town property or what, but there's a block of Church Street from the, um, Pleasant Street down to um, Washington Street that doesn't have a sidewalk. And then at one point, Washington Street had a sidewalk that's now been incorporated into driveways because people have just paved over the sidewalks over the years. So you make it down to like 410, I believe, and then there's no more sidewalk the rest of the way. So I don't know if you're considering looking at that, because I know um, Wetmore Street is getting sidewalks with their new development, too. Well, clearly when we're starting from scratch, like with Wentworth Street or other, like Stockdale, it, the planning board can, uh, and, wow. and Mike is our uh, rep on the planning board, so they can require a sidewalk and green spaces, parks, a whole host of things, depending on how many how many people would be served by the development. Uh, 
down and require. So you can also waive all of those requirements. So I would say, Celia, keep keep that your sidewalk question in mind. I don't know how to answer. I don't know if Jeff knows an answer for why side, sidewalks have ended abruptly or. No, he's saying no. They were like that when I took this job. Yeah, so. you know, there's, we, we just we uncover, discover, whatever, quite a lot of things that I believe us. that some of them in my neighborhood where it stops abruptly, people have paved over them and other people have not maintained them, so they've grown over with moss and grass and just deteriorated to the point where they're no longer existing. Yep. So I would say hang on to that thought and when we start talking, you know, as we get closer to that time, because, you know, we, we anticipate holding these kinds of sessions as we, you know, because I think it's helpful for people to know what we're planning uh, for the, for the, you know, where they're living and the roads that they're driving on. And it's helpful to get a read of various parts or spots that, you know, you know, a little number on a, in a column doesn't really provide the color that you know Gary's pictures can, or or uh, your 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 words and and your words. So my concern is is that the school board doesn't pay for a school bus to come into my neighborhood. So I have to walk my kids down those streets with no sidewalks to get them to school, mm -hmm. and then they get onto Main Street, and they have to cross Main Street where there's no crosswalk currently to get onto the sidewalk at the neighboring property and then walk through your parking lot to get the school bus in front of town hall. Hmm. That's an issue they to discuss with the school board too, is it? it well, it's, it's a, I would say it's a it's and public safety. It's my kids and any kids that are going to be moving into the new development on Wentworth Street will be, the kids in town, I feel, will be most at risk for an accident because they're going to be crossing the train tracks and the main road. Where, where is there no crosswalk Main Street? Um, where Paul's garage is to... Uh, well, it just got paved, so it's not there yet. Oh, well, they may not... But they one there isn't going to be one there, there because a sidewalk needs to go... A crosswalk needs to go sidewalk to sidewalk. A, si a crosswalk cannot just put it across the road and into grass. You actually need, some, you know, two points of where that crosswalk is going to connect and so it's going to connect in front of and there's nothing there's side. nothing there so you have sidewalk coming off of church street across the street from paul's integrity and then you have sidewalk on this side yeah of the what, what you can do is i would i would i'm not trying to kick the can or volley this problem to somebody else but if the school uh can is aware of this problem regarding to the regarding the buses and your children. I mean, then then perhaps we can have some kind of mutual conversation about. What, I don't know what to do that would be best served. I mean, maybe it's not having them cross the railroad track and Main Street. You know, so it's not. You know, I don't want to solve a problem incorrectly. I guess what yeah. I'm trying to say. Maybe there's a better solution. But I would I would start with the school board so that they know that you know your children are. are Perhaps not in the uh, walking in the best the best conditions. And a couple of years ago, when other kids in the neighborhood started, they would bring a bus into our neighborhood. But now they no longer do that. I see. Sorry, Mom. Yeah. I, we'll just say one more thing about Pinch Hill. I mean, I've had a couple a couple of people said that, so I've taken note of that. It seems to me the one out a little bit of an outlier that people have noticed with regard to the plan. So we will. You know, definitely keep that in mind. Or is there anything that you want to add or comment on that? Well, one of the reasons Pinch Hill is there is A, we're tearing up equipment, and B, there's culverts that need to be replaced on that on that road as well. So we might as well replace the culvert at the same time as the road. So there's no sense fixing the culvert, putting a patch pave, and then five years later, repaving it again. So that was one of the reasons why Jeff don't want to speak for you, Jeff, but that's one of the reasons why that was one of the top ones. Sonny. Yeah, Sonny Foss, Ronald's Road. I don't know if anybody in this room has been here long enough, but this is the second time that we've reclaimed Bear Road, and now we're looking at the second time we're doing Foundry. Uh, Foundry really sticks out because 
when they did it last time, they hit a buried manhole and it really tore the machine up pretty bad. So getting at this, what are you going to reclaim on Foundry? Because so Foundry is actually in not bad shape. Jeff, do you want to, where, I can't remember the seg where the segment starts. And so we're looking from Main Street to pretty much where the Legion is uh, yeah. to reclaim that due I, to the deterioration totally of the road. With that. Part of that hill I could understand. But the, the, the main flat se section down there by where the uh, sewer lift station is, yeah, that's all good, you know, all the way up to, to Silva. I, I'll disagree with that. Just well, due to the week, the, you, you, we're always out there with, with asphalt or a coal patch filling potholes due to the wheel ruts where they hold water and ice and, and everything else through the year. So when we're plowing, we're leaving, you know, two, three inches of snow on the road where the plow is running over the wheel ruts. What I'm hoping when we redo the road is when we reclaim it, we keep that material in the road as a, as a gravel and it tightens the road up and, and you know, it builds the road and, and hopefully we won't have no more trouble with it. You know, a lot of our roads are not posted to trucks. And I'm sorry, but our roads in Rollins are not rated for a 100,000 pound truck to be running up and down them on a steady basis. Well, I see we posted their road, no commercial vehicles. Yep. We've started, you know, we've started to look at our roads and, and do well, that. Well, then, then let me ask you this. Uh, we spent, what, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 on that road? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you can't put a commercial vehicle across it unless you're doing a local delivery? Yep. Uh, I don't really would agree with that. Well, they do, they do daily. Oh, yes, they do. They do. And so, and it's expensive for the town to, to you know, to keep our roads in, you can see. You can see we're struggling, you know, with a 10-year plan to to get our roads in a decent shape. So that's why that is why we do it. Well, why is Jesse Doe Road listed so so soon? I know it's been there for a while. Again, you know, partly it, it's it's used a lot for the transportation. It's uh, you know, Jeff, I I don't. Do you want to say anything about that? Or? Looking to do Jesse Doe Road because there's a lot of commercial vehicles on it, and I'd like to catch that road before we end up like Bear Road. So if we can, if we can catch the road ahead of time, you know, it's cheaper to do an overlay on it's the an road overlay. It's an than overlay to do a full reclamation. Um, if you notice, every time it rains out on Jesse Doe Road in the hollow, there's two huge puddles of water right there. Well, the worst thing for a road is water. As crazy as it sounds. Now, when we did Bear Road, I assume we had to do some drainage work. Who did your drainage work? Who did the drainage work? Com uh, Pike Industries. Thank you, Pike. Is the reason why we didn't do it, we the town? It wasn't cost effective. We, did, we actually bid out the numbers for us to do the culvert work ourselves, and it was actually cheaper to put it into the Baby. Really? Yeah. I almost find that hard to believe. I, I mean, do too. <laughs> I mean, a few years back, we went and spent, what, $100,000 on a tractor, and... For the backhoe? Yeah. Yes. No, that's when they bit, the, the, the town bidded out privately to other excavating companies, not for Jeff to do. Not for me to do. Well, no, that's what I'm talking about, is us oh. doing it, this town. I mean, you, you, you see part of Division Jeff 6 doing a lot of the work here on Main Street. They've been up doing a lot of work on Rollins Road. Division it, 6? Yeah. Yes. Uh, what, is there state maintained roads? Right. Yes. But I'm just saying, they're doing it. They didn't hire out to commercial contractors. Well, okay, Jeff, would you like to? Uh, on, on one note, Division 6 is doing their own work, yes, but Division 6 also has six or seven employees Understand. doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm one guy. Right. Maybe, you know, and I have a part-time guy, maybe 20 hours a week. So it's hard for me to put a culvert in by myself. That's great. So, you know, th that's why we are not doing um, cross culverts in roads because we just don't have the manpower to do it. But we are doing small ditching jobs. We use, the you know, we use that backhoe at the transfer station for 
all the stuff that needs to be done at the transfer station. When trees come down, we use the backhoe to haul, we haul out a, probably a majority of our trees to save town money in that aspect. So, I mean. I think even if you hired people for the summer, I still think it would come out cheaper if you laid this all out and systematically did one after the other when you had the people. We'll I mean, we got the equipment. Yep, we'll keep that in mind. Yeah, now, another been. thing, if, if you notice who did Main Street and Rollins Road was Continental. Yes. Now, they covered a lot of road in a very short length of time. Yes. Perhaps, Matt, you might want to consider that bunching more of that together to get more done. In other words, stretch a dollar further. Well, that, you know, we're always looking at that. I mean, they, I think they did do a bid. They were, they responded. Continental did not bid any they of our work. They didn't bid ours, okay. No. So we had four responses. And they did the they first, did, they did the first, first year, and they were a lot higher than Pike, and they didn't this year. We did have four responses this year, and we chose the uh, second to the last on the bid chart because of difficulties that surrounding towns had uh, experienced with the very lowest bidder, and we just don't have the staff power to be on top of the things that we felt we needed to be on top of if we had hired that company. So we went with Pike. They done, had done a nice job the first time. They did a nice job this other time. So, but the problem, we're small. It's, it's very frustrating. It's hard to leverage. You know, the, the, in order, you know, we talked to, to the Pike uh, rep, and he said, look, even, this, even these $200,000, $230,000 jobs are small for us. And so we would have to string together a lot of things. And it, it, it would, yes, it probably would be cheaper per whatever unit you want to, s but we, we couldn't come up with the cash unless we bonded and we have other issues we're looking at. So, you know, we're just gonna, you know, we think we've got a decent plan. You know, we've got some ideas for how we might jiggle some things around and we're gonna, you know, try to keep plotting through on this. Any other questions or comments? Do you bid every street individual? Mm -mm. Uh, no. I, well, I don't know what you mean by every street individual. It depends. Like the every patio. job. Every job I'm seeing up there. Do you bid them each individual? No, it would be one year's worth of projects. Okay. That's how we would package that. It, it looks like, the, maybe I'm wrong, it looks like model takes advantage of stringing things together in the same proximity. You also notice the longest rows rise to the top because in terms of loss on investment, like Jeff was saying, if it starts breaking up, you, you, the liability for a two-mile road is much greater. So it, seems, it does seem to make penalize the folks on a short road um, that isn't a through that isn't a right, through the way. And it, right. It's also true that the longer ones tend to be more of our throughways. Because it's so, my concern is, is I know we're trying to protect our roads, but as Sunny pointed out, when we close some of the roads to heavy equipment, like Bear Road, other roads in town that don't have those restrictions are getting beat up even more, like Church Street. Now that C and J can't cut over on Bear Road to 236, they're on Church Street and they're going under the bridge, which caused us that problem earlier this year that was brought to the select board. So it's because of the Bear Road restriction that they're. It's I more thought they frequent. were doing it anyway because of the curb. It. I would say it's more frequent because of the restrictions. I thought it was just because of the way the roads are curved and this was just the best way well, to stop right, up, right across the way. Mm -hmm. They have a stop right at the, at the, on the end of South Forward. C and J has a stop over there? I thought that was Coast. It's Coast. No, we don't have one over there. That's the and Coast. J did the, the right it is Coast. I'm sorry. So they call it. Church Street is being used more frequently for the C and J buses because it's 
one of the easiest ways to get to me besides there. There, but I don't what, what I've noticed with the seeing J bus is is one takes a left, one goes straight. One takes a left, one goes straight. One takes a left, one goes straight. There's a reason for they that. split. They split it up. No, it's not. You know, there's a reason for that. Well, I have. I, you know, in the years I've been here, I've not noticed any more or any less traffic or bus traffic on that road. To, to get back to the restriction, restricting traffic. I mean, so if they're not on Bear Road and um, Sligo and and chill, they're probably on Portland and other roads that are that are better able to manage that kind of vehicle and are state maintained. And so it's not like we're trying to shift costs. But I mean it, it I mean it made sense to us. I'm not I'm not trying to be clear. It made sense for us to try to protect our roads. Because you know we, we just don't you can see we just don't have the resources to to do everything that we need to do right now to keep get these roads up up to snow. So we're going to plug away at them. We'll let people know. You know, we're not. We've got the plan. So I don't think Church Street is on there because it was just reclaimed a couple of years ago. Uh, everything is on here, I think, except there are only very few exceptions. Church Street should be here. Well, let me look at this one. And I don't know. Can you, can you make note of that? Yeah. The ones that we found that were missing were the very new ones, which we figured we probably wouldn't do in this 10 years anyway. So we've since added them. They're in the data set, like Ross Road. Uh, there's a, another new one. It escapes me at the moment. But they're, they, maybe it's Turgeon Line. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they've now, you don't see them here, but they have been added into the, the data set. And we did, though, notice that Oak Street's not here. And parts of it we do maintain. We're in conversation with uh, with Dover to see who does what to whom on Oak Street. So we haven't quite figured it out. And when I checked with the uh, SRPC, they do have all of Oak Street as Dover's. So that's why it didn't show up in this data set. So we'll have to keep Oak Street in mind, too, as we, as we think about this. Nancy? Nancy Dion Rollins Road. As she's talking about Church Street, I can't see from back here, but is there a Berwick Street on there somewhere? Yes, it's yeah. 2026. Oh my God. First one, right here. <laughs> that would be nothing but dust. That's only 10 winters. It's not even what, it, it's not even at the width that it's supposed to be at, and it's gonna be. Totally destroyed by them. So, yes, Gary. How often will this, you said, prioritize and reevaluate? Is Probably, this an ongoing process? Yes, we see it as an ongoing process. Decided by what? If you Maybe. drop a sinkhole in your road? <laughs> I mean, what would cause us to change it? Yeah. Well, you know, I would say by summer or, you know, early fall, something, you know, maybe this time of year, probably sooner. This is our first go around. Uh, what we're looking for is some feedback, some genuine feedback on the costs. You know, we're using as our, you know, costing North Star here what this program is spitting out for us. Is it? So this is in today's, this is today's dollars we're looking at. I think they are inflated, though, as it goes up. I believe the algorithm had an inflationary kind of a thing. But still, if the base isn't, isn't correct, then the inflation's not going to be required. So. Just on the, it just occurred to me, on that inflation, would you anticipate that 250 to 300,000 being adjusted also because if the prices are going up, but your base number is the well, same? Well, we don't know. We, you know, we think that there's been inflation built into this. So our price, you know, we're, we're trying to hold it steady. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely inflation steady. based on what? Right now, inflation is almost negative. Mm -hmm. it's going to be obvious. It's going to be all these losing money a year. All these models have yeah. projections. Yeah. So yeah. there's there's methods for doing that. They're, my, not, they're not perfect. Yeah. My personal, you know, question would be is since, you know, I, I, I worry about my street. Sure. And I'm paying taxes to all these streets. Mm -hmm. So what is going, 
how do I know that the town is going to take the action to go talk to the state? Well, Jeff, Jeff is going to. Well, you say that, but is well, that going to happen? Is the state going to respond? Yeah. I don't know. I tell you what, so I'll call. I'll call the state meeting. And I will call first thing yeah. tomorrow morning. Yeah. I will talk to the dispatch. Everything is logged through dispatch. You can call Durham after I talk to him, and you can ask if I've called. And everything I call is is logged. So I, yes, I, I'll be calling them. Every time there's a call, they legitly send somebody out. All right. So it'll. But what are the chances that something's going to happen? That I cannot tell you. So I'm, I'm going to be competing with all the streets in the state. Uh, well, I, I mean, I can't diagnose, uh, I'm not familiar with that, I can't really yeah. diagnose it. It depends on whether they, it's, it's some simple, uh, mit there's some way to, to simply mitigate what you're talking about, more simple than, you know, bringing a, you know, repaving the road. Now, I just don't know. I don't know what they will say. Depends on how loud your voice is. The, the, state, is bro the state is broken up into districts, so you're not competing against the entire state with all the other communities within District 6. And within that district, um, the regional planning commissions come to the towns. Back up. The Executive Council sets the 10-year highway fund, right? And the way that they distribute the funding is via the, um, the different uh, highway districts in the state. And the regional planning commissions work with the towns to prioritize what, um, what the greater needs are. Um, you can imagine that every town believes their needs are more important than the town next to them. And so then the, the uh, Regional Planning Commission would then rank all the projects, turn it back over to the state, and the state decides when they will be coming to Rollins for the when they'll go to Summers or whatever our community. Last hour was in the district. So it's not, I got a 200 foot. I, I get that. I get that. But I mean, so it, it's, it's, it's important for us when Stratford Regional Planning says what streets, and we will remind them again the Silver Street. Perhaps they're not remembering that they're responsible for further than what they did. Well, I, I didn't want to insinuate that. You know that I didn't want to come across to say that. You know, you said you're going to do something. You're not going to do it. But, you know, I, I have employees, and you know, I yeah, ask them to do you things know, I, all the I can, time. I can make the phone call once the ball's in their court. Yeah. I do know that when the phone call is made, they do come out and respond to whatever okay. complaint is made. Well, I appreciate that. After that, they don't call me back and say, hey, this we're going to do this, this, and this. It's in there. Okay. It's, it's what they do. One question I do have, who, who plows my street? Is that the state or is that the town? The Silver Street? Yeah. The state plows your road. So the state comes down that extension as well? Down that extension? No, yeah. we, we've... So I call it Short Street or Silver Street, the extension. The Silver Street is my street. The street, Silver Street extension is my street. State plows that. You, the state plows it. We plow the dead end. That's me. That's him. That's him. Then, yeah, we plow you that. Plow the, the, one ton, the one ton plows that. So if you're on the dead end, then the town is responsible for that part, right? And that would be yeah, our discussion. Yes. I mean, well, so obviously all of us on the side of the table thought you lived on mm -mm, the silver. other side before the bend on short street. So. I know. So then that would not be factored in as well. It's silver lane. Right. Silver lane. No, it's right. not silver lane. So, silver street so short street or is not on this, is Short Street? Short Street Street would be part of the state, I guess, right? It's just the dead end yeah. part? Short the cul-de-sac. The cul-de-sac. The cul-de-sac that abuts Route 4. Okay. All right, so we need to That's add that. Yeah, that you can. Know, the tiny little tree is. Yeah, you're okay. Talking about. All right, we you're need to get. You're not going to take my tree, are you? <laughs> I'm, the one, cuts, no. I'm the one that cuts <laughs> the grass. I'm the one that does all Eventually, the Eventually, when that road is redone, the tree will be taken out and it'll be fully paved so we can push all the snow to one side of the road. Yes. Sorry. I have to fight with my wife now. I'll have to come back and yell at us again. I've been taking care of that whole, so that whole area. We'll, so obviously this, that, that little piece needs to be added. So sorry about that. You aren't there. You really should be here. So we'll need to look at that. We yeah, I thought, I thought you were on Silver Street itself. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be over there to look at stuff yeah, tomorrow. Silver Street veers to the, I guess, to the right and goes to Route 4. Mm -hmm. Yes. You cross mm -hmm. over that. 
There's about five homes there. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of them. Well, Turgeon and Ross are now on it. You're just not saying it here, but they're in the data set. We probably wouldn't do anything in the 10 years because they're, they're close. Celia? Um, I know you're talking about Ross and Turgeon not being on the list because they're fairly new and my understanding is is that when developments go in and um, developers build them, they maintain the road and turn it over to the town. If the town accepts the road, it's town mm -hmm. meeting that it's the legislative body, which is town meeting, that accepts a new road or not. So how many roads currently are being built or maintained by individuals that could become town roads? Wentworth. Um, there's the, I think Greenview is a, not a town road yet, although there's some discussion about whether it'll be accepted that or not. Is there anything else? Turbine is private. No, it's town. not. It was accepted, accepted at town meeting about three years ago. It, had, it was private at first, but it was mm -hmm. accepted at town meeting. He accepted me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, know. I don't well. know. We accepted Greenview? Yeah. yeah. My other question know? is Pleasant. Oh, no, they added no. a little bit more to the road. No, is that no, no, already no. considered part of Pleasant? No. Or? So. My guess is that that's just part of Pleasant. Okay. Turgeon Lane, which is on. Um, all right. Um, other questions? The word, anything else? We really appreciate your coming out. It's a, kind of a rainy night, yucky night, but um, we really do appreciate the feedback. We weren't sure how many people were going to show up, whether it was going to be like this or hordes or whatever. So I don't know whether it means that most people feel okay about this. Maybe most people live in a state-owned road. I don't know. But anyway, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate it.